Hello my YouTube friends. Today I want to talk about a game changing free live streaming app. And no, I don't actually think that's hyperbole. I think it changes everything. Polypop Live is the name of it and it introduces 3D to live streaming in an amazing new way. And oh, by the way, it's totally free. So today I want to show you how to add alerts to your YouTube streams using Polypop for any kind of alerts, like subscriber alerts. Super Chat Alerts, or even Chat Commands. And we're going to be building them right in the software, so you can just stream directly from Polypop if you want, but I'm going to show you how to add them to your OBS streams as well. So this is going to be a bit of a longer one. Buckle up and let's get to it! <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Polypop, just so you know. But the software is totally free, so they sponsored just because they want you to know about it. And believe me, you want to know about it. So click the link in the description down below to download it. Then you want to install it, and the first thing you want to do is run through the quick tutorial that Polypop gives you. Now you don't want to skip the little tutorial. Polypop is very different from other live streaming apps. The tutorial is going to help you get your bearings and make it a lot easier for you to follow along as I show you how to add these alerts. So do the tutorial, don't worry, I'll wait. Okay, so you're done? Well then, let's create some alerts. Once you finish the quick tutorial that kind of shows you around, you're gonna come back and want to get yourself a new scene. So you're gonna go up into starting points and you can just uh, see your recent scenes, but you're gonna go to basic and you're gonna click new project and open and that'll get you a whole clean scene so that you can start doing what you wanna do. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is open up your library here and just pin it. This makes life a lot easier because you can always see it and it's not covering the screen. Now we're gonna click this plus over here and we're going to go in 2D. We're gonna grab a 2D image and click add and that brings up our sources here. I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to import image and I'm gonna put a display overlay in here and there we go. So now we have an overlay in here that has super chat and new subscriber in there. It's gonna make it easy to add some labels. So next I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus and go to 3D and I'm gonna add a breakable box and you can see when I move it it breaks you can throw them it'll break more really really cool stuff I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this here to make it less brittle and I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to adjust the opacity to 100% so the boxes are fully visible. Now what I want to do is I want to set the dimensions for our box, but let's go ahead and reset it and move it to a position where I want it. So I'm going to move the box again and just move this little box placeholder. It makes it easier to move things around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to dimensions. And I'm going to set this to the same dimensions as my camera. So that would be 16 by 9. And you can see when I do this, everything kind of goes crazy. I hit reset, it's going crazy. And that's because our scale is basically full screen. So I'm gonna go and drop this down here a little bit, go into transform, and I'm gonna go down here to scale, and I'm just gonna scale my box down so it is the size that I want. And I don't want a very big box, this is just gonna be our camera believe it or not. And now our box is the size we want. We can reset it and it puts it on our little point. We'll just move this box out of the way so we can move the actual set point. And there we go. That's pretty much where I want the box to be. And you can see what it looks like when you explode the box. It looks pretty cool, but I think it'll look pretty cool with a little bit of dimension. So we're gonna add a little bit of Z axis here, maybe three. And I'm gonna move this out a little bit and we'll move it up a little bit. And that's good. That's where we want our camera to be. Now when we explode it, you can see it looks pretty cool. We can explode it multiple times and it just keeps exploding. That is awesome. So what I want to do is go here to texture, go to no object and select it. And I want to drop this down and select webcam. And I can set my webcam settings if I want, but that's okay. We'll just click okay and boom. Our webcam is now on our 3D box. And what I can do is just scroll up here to the top and explode it. And now it explodes into a million different little camera boxes. Explode it again. I can just keep exploding it. Although you want to be careful. Your machine can only handle so many of these boxes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the explosiveness a little bit and I just want to have stuff that's kind of covering the whole screen. I don't want it all in the corners. So I'm just trying to make it a little less explosive. There we go. That works pretty nicely. I like that. That looks okay. Now I'm going to come over here to the library, click the plus and go to YouTube alerts. You can see right here, 
here, we need to connect it. So I'm just gonna click here and then connect my YouTube channel to Polypop. And now it populates this here. So we have a bunch of alerts that we can create. Let's start out with a chat alert. I'm gonna click the plus here. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go into the command and type exclamation point break. And anybody or moderator or sponsor or owner can be the only ones that you set here in the privilege. It's up to you. But we're gonna grab this little nugget here from on command. We're gonna drag it up to action sequence. Then I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna emit an alert. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna name this alert. This is gonna be break one. And we're gonna drag this over here to our explode function. And I'm gonna click the plus again and we're gonna go to wait. And we'll just add a couple of seconds in the middle and then we'll click the plus again and we're gonna add another emit alert we'll call this break two, electric boogaloo now just break two I think that'll work we're gonna drop this and put it on explode again we're gonna click the plus again we're gonna add another weight we'll add a couple of seconds in here and then we're gonna add another emit and we'll call this break three we'll drag this down onto explode and then we're gonna add one last weight on here at the end of this one maybe a little bit longer and then we'll click the plus we're gonna go ahead and add another emit alert we're gonna call this one reset and we'll just drag this onto the reset for a breakable box and after this alert runs then it's going to reset the whole box and now when we click test you could see it breaks once breaks twice it breaks a third time and then it resets after a couple of seconds so anytime that someone types exclamation point break, that's what we're gonna get. Let's add some text. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna click plus, we're gonna add 3D text, and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna change the style to Aldo the Apache, which is what I always use. And we wanna put this down here, but you can see it's going underneath our overlay. So we need to drag this overlay down below our 3D layers. And now we select our text again and we can drag it up over top. So we're gonna go down here into transform and we're gonna go ahead and scale our text so it fits in here properly. And we wanna adjust the depth on this text. It doesn't need to be quite so 3D. Thinner text will do just fine. And we'll rescale it until we get the size we're looking for. That looks good. We'll just kinda move it into position over here and continue to scale and move until it looks how we want. And we're just gonna delete the actual text because we're gonna have that created by a label. So we're gonna go up here to alerts and we're gonna grab this new subscriber alert up to our action sequences and we'll click the plus and we'll go to edit alert then we're gonna name it and we'll call this label then we're gonna drag this down here to our text and what is in the text here is already fine. It's just going to add the username. So you can see it there. It says channel title, and that's fine. This is just going to be the name of the new subscriber. And when we click test, you can see it switches to test user. So that's gonna be the subscriber name. And you can see there, it does work. I got a subscriber and it worked. We're gonna click the plus. We're gonna go to 3D text again, and we're gonna add as a 3D emitter. And that creates this little box that we're gonna drag down here. We're gonna go to objects, 3D text. We're just gonna delete the text here because we're gonna have it created by the label and we're gonna adjust our style so that it is the proper font that we use and what we want to do is we want to make sure this is about the same size as the text that's already there so I'm going to check and see what the scale is that we used on the other 3d text and then I'm gonna go ahead down here and we are gonna adjust the scale on this text as well so that it is nearly the same now obviously you can't see it it just has this place holder box here and when we emit burst since we don't have any text here you can't actually see it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this up to action sequences then I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna add an alert we're gonna select the 3d text and we're gonna scroll down here to where our text would be and we're gonna just drag this down into the text area and there we go now it's gonna give us the opportunity to add the text we only need the channel name because this is gonna be exactly the same as the other one we just want the channel name and we're gonna drag it down and we're gonna click emit burst as well. Now I'm gonna set the burst. We don't want the time limit to be infinite. We want a specific amount of time that this is gonna be on screen. So we'll set this around seven some seconds. And now when we click test, you can see we get this little burst. And it's only one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our burst count. So it's more than one. And you can see it fades out after about seven seconds. So let's do 14 and click test. And now 14 of our little usernames 
items are gonna pop out of the test user when someone subscribes. Now they just kind of float there and we're gonna fix that in a second. What we can do right here with the rotation is we can adjust the angle that these emit or are launched at. You can see that just rotates that arrow there and then when I click emit, it will go out the same direction as the arrow and kind of float over and float around the screen. That looks pretty cool. What we wanna do and the reason why we created this other text here, um, one, it's the label, but two, we can go down here and we can go to mods and we can set it to have an attractive force. So we're gonna adjust the attractive force to four. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our 3D text and when we click emit burst, you can see it just kind of sticks there to that attractive force. So we'll try to adjust the velocity to see if we can break this attractive force a little bit. We'll adjust it up and that seems to be still not launching and we're still not launching. So I think we're gonna have to adjust our attractive force down just a little bit, maybe cut it to about two. And now when we go and we select our emitter, we can emit a burst burst and boom it goes off and then everything is going to kind of just come swinging back and then disappear right there which is a really really cool effect and now we do need to add one more thing to this effect because believe it or not all of these little 3d texts can fly around and actually hit our camera and knock it out of whack so I'm gonna adjust our angle here a little bit so it goes more over towards our camera and maybe we can see it actually pop the camera. There we go. We had one hit the camera and affect it. And so what we need to do is we need to add something else to our action sequence so that it fixes that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a weight in here and we'll add the weight so it's the same amount of time as our stuff is on the screen, about seven and a half seconds. We'll just check to see what it is here. Yep, right there we wanna set our weight so it's at least as long as that, maybe a little longer. Then I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna add an emit event again and we're just gonna call this reset and I'm gonna select my 3D box and we'll drag this down to reset. So now, now at the end of this little action animation, if it does happen to whack our camera box at the end, it will just be reset. So now what I'm gonna do quickly is we're gonna add the exact same text up here to the super chat box. And I already showed you how to do this, so I'm just gonna quickly kinda of speed through it. Now that our super chat's set up, let's go down here and set up our alert. So you can see it has an amount here. We're just gonna set this to one, which means it's going to launch with anything over a dollar or one. And we're gonna drag the super chat up to our action sequences and click on this plus button and we're gonna emit an alert and we'll rename this alert label and then we're gonna just drag it down and we're gonna add it to that text and boom now we have our text now we don't need the chat message in here since this is just going to be a label so what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the chat message piece of it and we're just going to have the username and the amount and that looks pretty good that's what we're looking for and then what we'll do is go ahead and size this this up and stick it where it's supposed to go and now we have a label for our super chat every time we get a super chat that is gonna go ahead and change itself looks pretty good now what I want to do is I want to add a 2d text component to this so we're gonna click the plus we're gonna go to 2d we're gonna go to 2d text and click add and of course I'm gonna change my 2d text to the proper Aldo the Apache font and I'm gonna move our 2d text all the way up to the top so it's over top of everything and I'll move the box down here here into the center of the screen. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to Super Chat. I'm gonna just drag this up again. We're gonna create another action sequence. And I'll click the plus and we'll do an emit alert and we can name this one and it's gonna be the screen text. And what I'll do is just drag this down to our text right here. And we can see we have username and then we have the chat message. And then of course we have the amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this chat message piece right here with a control C then I'm gonna delete it and I'm gonna just write super chatted in here make sure we have the proper spaces and then at the end I'm gonna put a space and I'm gonna just paste that chat message again so we're gonna get exactly what the user's chat message was with the name of the user and the amount now I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go ahead and add a timer on here and it all depends how long we want this to be on screen and now we need to click the plus and we're gonna add another emit alert and this is gonna be to turn this on and and off so we're gonna put turn on and we're gonna drag this up here and we're just gonna drag this over to visible and we're gonna select toggle on and off and we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna create another emit alert and we'll call this turn off and then all we have to do is drag this down to our visible again and select toggle on and off so now we can turn it 
off and we can close that out. And when we hit test under Super Chats, we can see that there we go. We have a really awesome box that gives us all the information and all that kind of stuff. Now we can go down here and we can select mods, animate on update. Then we can go into actions and we can select how our text comes up. So this is a horizontal shake and we have to kind of kick it off. And there we go. We can see it animates with a horizontal shake when it becomes active. We can try the flash and that kind of flashes a different color. When it becomes active, we can select flicker and that flickers. We can also select type and it will type it on there. That's pretty cool. I like that. And of course, the last one is the vertical shake and that looks just fine as well. So that's how this box will appear and it's all set up. The last piece we really need to do here to set this up, I want to go up here and I want to change all of the names up on this because when you get a bunch of stuff up here, it's hard to know exactly what it is. It's best if you remember which text each piece is, which emitter each piece is, so you don't get confused. So now we'll just pop over into OBS and click the plus under the scene that we want to add this to. And we can name this if we want. I'm just going to call it Polypop and click OK. We'll drop this down and we select the Polypop camera. And we're going to go into device and we're going to select custom. That way we can set our resolution. But more importantly, we want to be able to go down here to any and select ARGB video format. So you want to make sure that you select that and click OK. So now it's actually in OBS. I can click the plus and we'll go up here and click media source. And we're going to add this media source here. We'll move it down below. And now you can see that obviously it is all transparent. So we'll put these side by side and I'll just click test on some of these alerts. And you can see they work just fine. It's awesome. The only thing you'd really have to do is add audio to this. If you would like, you can do that in OBS or you can add that sort of stuff in there so that you can use an audio source that plays when this happens as well. You just add that as part of your action sequence. And of course, the last piece is our chat break command and boom, there we go. It shatters the camera all over the screen. It looks awesome. I'm telling you, Polypop changes everything. It's so easy to create custom alerts and chat sequences. You're going to have so much fun with this and they don't have to be elements that are just on the screen. You can create elements that appear when someone types something in chat. It's just awesome. Let me know what you think of Polypop and tell them what you want to see in Polypop down in the comments below. They definitely will be watching, so it's your chance to reach them directly. Now, this is a long video, and what I showed you here just scratches the surface of what is possible in Polypop. It's absolutely amazing. If you want to see how to replace text in your live streams with animated 2D or 3D text using Polypop, check this video out. Big thanks to Polypop for sponsoring this video. There are links to Polypop and all of the sponsors that support this channel down below in the description under sponsors. Supporting the sponsors that help keep the lights on here in the studio is a great way to help me continue to make content that helps you. And I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.